Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our first ever virtual Gift of Life Gala. I'm Kathleen Davis, the Executive Director of the Eastern Missouri Chapter, and I am honored to be here tonight with all of you. I especially would like to thank our sponsors who made this event possible and all of you watching safely at home. Tonight is going to be a wonderful mission-focused and fun event. Now I'll welcome our MC for the evening, Chris Raby, who will be taking us on this virtual journey. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the first ever virtual Gift of Life Gala. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm your host for the evening, Chris Raby. It is amazing to be back, even if we're not all gathered together, for another night, as we hope you sit back, relax, enjoy your meal, enjoy a drink, and take part with us in a fantastic evening. Tonight we'll make a difference and support kidney patients across Missouri, across the Metro East, and do some incredible things. The program that you're about to see would not be possible without our generous sponsors, and we'd like to start the evening by thanking them. Our presenting sponsor this evening is SSM Health St. Louis University Hospital. We'd also like to thank Siemens Health and Ears, Emerson, MTM, Fresenius Kidney Care, Triceta, Care DX, Mid America Transplant, Stiefel Bank and Trust, Delmar Gardens, St. Luke's Hospital, Midwest Nephrology Associates. AstraZeneca, SSM Kidney Care, Otsuka, Pfizer, Tito's Handmade Vodka, Ron and Cindy Maurer, Weinberg Family, Express Scripts. Thank you so much for your generous and continued support. Time now to grab your chef's hat. We're going to learn from one of the best as Chef Russell shows us how to make the classic Veggie Napoleon. Good evening, everyone. I'm Russell Cunningham, executive chef with Union Station Hotel. Thank you for being with us tonight for the virtual Gift of Life Gala. Uh, tonight, I'm going to show you a heart healthy uh, vegetable Napoleon. Um, so let's get started. So on this tonight, I've got some vegetables and then we're going to add some quinoa to it. So I've got zucchini, yellow squash, uh, some portobello mushrooms, a couple of Roma tomatoes. So we're gonna slice all of these up, toss them with a little balsamic vinegar and olive oil, and then roast them in the oven. So we'll get these cut up first. And then we're gonna toss the zucchini and the yellow squash with the balsamic first. And just a little bit, just enough to coat it. We're just going to mix that around so it kind of coats on there. And then we'll do the olive oil after that so that that balsamic gets to soak in. So a little oil and then we'll do just a little salt and pepper with it. And then we're going to put those on a sheet pan. So just kind of lay them out. And then the mushrooms, we're just going to take the centers out of them. And with the spoon, we're just going to take just all the frill off of it. So clean just like that. And then we're going to slice these as well, just at a little bit of an angle into four pieces. And we'll toss those in that same bowl. 
just get them nice and coated and lay those out on a pan. All right, and then last we're gonna take our tomatoes and just cut the ends off of those. And we're just gonna cut them into five pieces. All right, same thing, just a little toss in the bowl. And onto the sheet pan. All right, so once we've got all this laid out, we're gonna put this into a 425 degree oven for about 15 minutes, just until everything's cooked through, and then we'll finish it off after that. All right, so once those are out of the oven, I just let them cool down just a little bit, and then I'm gonna show you how to build this. So along with the vegetables that we cut, I also have a little sauteed spinach that I already did, just a little oil, salt, and pepper, and sauteed that real quick. And then a little cooked quinoa, and you just follow the directions on the package for that one. Um, so to put this together, I have this little ring mold, and you can get these basically at any kitchen store, a whole set of them, different sizes. So we're gonna take that, we're gonna just put it down on the cutting board. We're gonna start with the mushrooms, so each one, we're gonna take about four slices of the mushroom and just put those in the bottom. And then we're gonna take some of our spinach and put that right on top of it, just kind of spread it around so you have a nice even layer of it. And so to get this nice and tight, I just take a spoon and just kind of push down on it on each layer so it's nice and compact. And then on top of the spinach, we're gonna do a little bit of the quinoa. Um, so we'll end up with about a half cup of quinoa in there. And same thing, you just wanna push that right down into the spinach. Just kinda go around the edges. All right, and then our other vegetables that we cooked are gonna go right on top of that. So I'm gonna do the zucchini, and we just kinda go around the edge on that, just enough to get you a layer. And then we're gonna do the yellow squash. And then once it gets outside the ring, I just take my hand and just put some pressure on it. Just like that. And then we're just gonna do a couple of the slices of tomato right on top of there. Um, so then just be careful. I put a little pressure on top and then just pull that ring right off the top of it. And that's gonna be our vegetable Napoleon. So to finish this whole thing off, I've got a little bit of warm marinara sauce. We're gonna take a plate. We're just gonna do a little bit of the marinara sauce right onto the plate. And then just really careful with the spatula, we're gonna pick this whole thing up and put it right there with that marinara sauce. And then tonight for my dinner, I'm just gonna do a little salad with it. You could do um, any kind of starch or extra vegetable or anything with it. This is just a little micro arugula. So I do a little bit of that. And I'm just going to hit that whole thing with just a little more olive oil. I've got some toasted pine nuts I'm going to do on there. And I like just a little bit of shaved Parmesan with mine as well. And I just use a peeler 
to kind of put that on there. And then just to give it a little tang, I'm just going to take a lemon and just do a little piece of that. And just throw that right with my salad. And that's dinner tonight. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, again, I'm Russell Cunningham with St. Louis Union Station Hotel. Um, hope you enjoy your evening. Hope everyone's having a fantastic time this evening, and we're about to have a little more fun. Get up, get your dancing shoes on or off, and put your hands together for a special musical performance by Sisters Magnolia and the Weeds.
Right now, 37 million Americans are affected by kidney disease, and most won't have any symptoms unless their kidneys fail. Our kidneys are vital organs that are just as important as the lungs, liver, and heart. No one can live without functioning kidneys. When kidneys fail, only immediate dialysis or transplant can save you. There are currently 100,000 people waiting for a kidney transplant. That's more than enough to fill up Bush Stadium twice. Help us spread the awareness of this often and silent killer. And thank you for supporting the National Kidney Foundation at the virtual Gift of Life Gala. Thanks. On behalf of Pam, Connor, Robert, Steve, and Pete, I'd like to thank all of you for doing your part to help fight kidney disease. Now, let's get back to the stage. Many times I've cried alone Always I'm surprised how well you cut my feelings to the bone I don't want to leave you really I've invested too much time to give you up that
Well, I know so many of us were really looking forward to attending tonight's gala at the St. Louis Aquarium. Tonight, we'll do the next best thing as we bring the aquarium to you with a special tour from our special tour guide, Sydney the Kidney. Take it away, Sydney.
Next up, please welcome our gala chair, Kelly Baumer. Good evening, my name is Kelly Baumer, and I just recently became a member of the National Kidney Foundation Board. I first learned of the exceptional work that the National Kidney Foundation does in my work at SSM Health St. Louis University Hospital with our transplant services. I've been really impressed with the work that the Kidney Foundation does in the community, educating those about kidney disease, as well as helping those that really struggle with kidney disease. Um, as I'm in the community, I am proud to be a board member and to really help further this work. I am the Vice President of Clinical Services at SSM Health St. Louis University Hospital, and I had the privilege of being the executive that led the construction of the new SLU Hospital, which opened uh, in September. We are just so excited to offer this new hospital to the community, and one of the key areas that we worked on was transplant services at our new facility. We have dedicated ORs that help with living kidney donation. We have two ORs that, where we can actually have the recipient in one room and the donor in another room, and then we can keep the organ uh, in a sterile environment. It never has to leave that environment. So we're really excited to offer that elevated service and quality for kidney transplantation. I'm also very um, proud that I work closely with Dr. Lentin, who is a proud advocate for organ donation and really a supporter of all of those that suffer with kidney disease. She recently received the Excellence in Kidney Transplantation Award from the National Kidney Foundation, which is a well-deserved honor. So um, I just want to again say thank you for all that you do for the National Kidney Foundation and I look forward to a great event tonight. Now we would like to welcome this year's Award of Excellence recipient, Dr. Krista Lentin of SSM Health St. Louis University Hospital. The Award of Excellence was established to recognize a scientist or clinician whose exceptional research has contributed novel insights in, or resulted in, improved access to kidney transplantation. There's no one more deserving for the 2020 award than Dr. Lentine. Let's welcome her now. Good evening, everyone. I'm Krista Lentine from St. Louis University, and I'm excited to share in thanking our community for joining tonight's Gift of Life Gala. And I'd like to express my deep appreciation to our National Kidney Foundation chapter for the honor of being named the 2020 Award of Excellence recipient. I know many of you personally, and for those I'm yet to meet, I'm sorry we aren't sharing the evening at the St. Louis Aquarium in person this year. Still, it's wonderful to be able to connect virtually and to celebrate the mission of the National Kidney Foundation in supporting kidney patient care in our community. As a bit of background for new and old friends, I've had the privilege of working at St. Louis University since 2005. And to recap briefly how I got here, I'm a California native and received my education and medical training at Stanford. I tell the story for framing, but one of the most adventuresome things I did in those early years to the concern of my parents at the time was to travel halfway around the world on a medical mission trip to Papua New Guinea during my training. But occasional outreach travel aside, still my plan was to live in California long term. But plans can change, and thanks to my husband, we moved to St. Louis in 2004 and I completed fellowship at Washington University. And the WashU year was important because in that year, I received formative mentoring from doctors Dan Brennan and Mark Schnitzer. Their combined mentoring led to productive collaborations and friendships that have continued to this day. And when Mark moved to SLU, he recruited me along with him. And thanks to Dr. Kevin Martin and Dr. Schnitzler, I joined the SLU faculty in 2005. It's been a real privilege to grow with our research group, nephrology division and transplant team, and in the process establish personal family roots 
and substantial local pride. Clinical research is an important aspect of my daily work and to highlight our research program focuses on transplant data science, clinical epidemiology, and health economics. We also conduct prospective observational work, including projects in genetic risk assessment, which include partnerships with the Mid-America Transplant Foundation, as well as clinical trial works with our projects centered around the key themes of optimizing organ use and reducing discards, supporting and improving living donor safety, and improving transplant outcomes. We invest substantial effort in our publication productivity and are proud to contribute to the academic dialogue that helps move the field forward. We also participate in transplant policy and I was fortunate to serve on the United Network for Organ Sharing Living Donor Committee for seven years, including a chair term. This experience also included service on the Policy Oversight Committee and through the UNOS work, I learned a lot firsthand about how transplant practice is governed in our country. I was also fortunate to co-chair an international work group on living kidney donation and help author the first international guideline on living donor care. We also partner with the Scientific Registry of Transplant Recipients, including helping pilot the first prospective US registry for long-term living donor follow-up, the Living Donor Collective. As breaking news, the new SRTR contract was just awarded in October 2020, and I'm delighted that Dr. Schnitzler and I are participating as senior scientists. And of note, expanding the Living Donor Collective to a national registry is one key goal. In my role, I've had the privilege of serving on a number of professional society work groups and steering committees related to transplant patient and living donor care. And this has allowed me to network and build relationships across our professional community, for which I'm deeply grateful. And to participate in national advocacy initiatives, including Kidney Health Advocacy Days on Capitol Hill. And witnessing the signing of the Advancing American Kidney Health Executive Order in Washington, D.C. in July 2019 was one of my most memorable professional experiences to date. It's been an honor to work with the NKF nationally in several important ways. With regard to professional education, I had the privilege of serving on the Spring Clinical Meetings Programs Committee and to lead the transplant course and programs in 2016 and 2017. This educational mission is mirrored in the efforts of our local chapter as reflected in regular roundtable events. And it's an honor to serve on the local medical advisory board and provide input in our local programs. And it was exciting to have the 2019 NKF President Holly Kramer visit St. Louis for the inaugural lecture. And program manager Jane Delworth does a wonderful job organizing these events. I'd like to take a moment to thank NKF National for the 2018 Massery Distinguished Lecture Award, which provided the opportunity to speak on balancing risk and autonomy in living kidney donation. And for continued collaboration, such as the 2019 Kidney Transplant Research Roundtable in New York City, with special thanks to Kevin Longino, Matt Cooper, Holly Kramer, Jessica Joseph and others for the planning and vision. And we look forward to writing up the discussion and recommendations. Returning locally, one thing I find so energizing about our local chapter is the commitment to kidney advocacy. And Kathleen Davis and her team actively engage with local and state leadership to advocate for support of kidney care. This includes embracing an issue of critical importance, the Living Donor Protection Act. And it was inspiring to witness Kathleen's dedication to outreach with state senators and representatives to garner support of this bill. I had the privilege of joining Kathleen to testify 
at the Missouri State Senate in January 2020 and to return along with a patient advocate to testify at the House in February 2020. Unfortunately, the pandemic prevented a return visit to witness signing by the governor, but it is gratifying that NKF advocates had an important role in supporting the success of this bill. Our transplant program and the NKF share a mission of local community outreach. We are the second transplant program in the country to host Big Ask, Big Give workshops in partnership with the NKF. And these workshops help kidney patients and their loved ones share about kidney disease, transplantation, and their need for an organ donor with their social network. And we're excited to continue these programs virtually with an upcoming workshop in December. I'd like to recognize other local collaborators, including MidAmerica Transplant, both for their vision and partnership in providing organ transplantation to our community, as well as for their support of research and innovation, including the Jane A. Beckman Endowed Chair, created in partnership with the SSM Foundation that helps support my work. I'd also like to thank individual community advocates like Ms. Beckman for her outreach on behalf of organ donation. This is also an important time to recognize our nurse colleagues, fellows, and frontline workers here sharing some time pre-pandemic, and we're grateful for your dedicated service during the pandemic. And I have special thanks for our Living Donor Coordinator, Cody Woolley, for invaluable partnership. I want to thank our university and department, including Drs. Wilmont and Nyack for their leadership, Ken Olaf and his team for their work in research development, and our amazing nephrology division, including the leadership of Dr. Barton and our wonderful collaborative faculty. We want to recognize our colleagues at Washington University and all the kidney practitioners in our region across practice settings for their collaboration in serving our local kidney community, as well as for collaboration in research and education. And finally, I'm grateful for wonderful collaborators in organ donation and transplant work across the country. And for the honor of being part of the outstanding transplant program led by Dr. Randall and for the support of SSM. So thanks again to the National Kidney Foundation for your mission and for hosting this wonderful event. And to all of you for your time in joining this evening. And I look forward to working together to support and advance the care of kidney patients locally and nationally. Wishing you a wonderful rest of the gift of life, Gala. And now we'd like to take a moment to share a word from our fantastic sponsors. It began with a promise. We said and have been saying for quite a number of years that we would open this hospital on September 1st of 2020. Well, we'd like to keep our word. The new SSM Health St. Louis University Hospital, at first just a collection of dreams and a series of drawings, is now a life-size, life-saving reality. This is a very special time for us. I really do feel that it's brought the staff and our physicians and really just everyone that works in this medical center closer together. And it's just great to be able to offer our patients and, and all our staff and our physicians that work here just this beautiful new place. You walk around here and there's a lot of lights, bells, and whistles that looking back 20 years ago, I would have loved to have in training as well. And yet at the same time, um, you know, I'm fortunate to be a part of it now. I have been so impressed with just the patient-focused nature of it. I think it's amazing. The new SSM Health St. Louis University Hospital is where our tradition of exceptional care and the future of medicine intersect in a transformative, state-of-the-art, 800,000 square foot hospital and ambulatory care center. People will get their steps in, um, that's for sure. <laughs> it's huge, it's huge. The new emergency department has tripled in size. 
we've got more stuff in our arsenal to, to care for the people in our area a little bit better. So I know just speaking from the ER, I know that we've got new and improved trauma rooms, new and improved patient rooms. So just being able to expand that space and have a little bit more area to treat more people for us is gonna be huge. I think these, the layout is great. The area that I will be working in is very spacious and new, clean, and fresh. A1, thumbs up. <laughs> yes, I love it. The new SSM Health St. Louis University Hospital also represents a $550 million investment in the city of St. Louis that is already paying dividends in the neighborhoods surrounding it. It's just revitalizing this whole area. I think it's a real commitment as far as for where not only SSM but also SLU Care want to be. I mean, they're in the right place to do the right type of health care at the right time. I can't say enough about our staff. I am so proud of them and so proud of the opportunity that they will have working in this new facility. When we started this project in 2015, we actually established user groups um, for all of the areas and we had over 400 employees, physicians, and staff that were involved in it. They've been amazing across this journey. You know, very understanding, you know, all the meetings, planning, you know, things to do last minute. When you see the end result, it was worth every minute. Definitely, we could not do it without their buy-in, but also without their, their creativity and their support, uh, which has been boundless. The pride, I think, will be oozing out of all of us. I'm really looking forward to everything being so spacious and so new is gonna be just phenomenal. Despite the crucible of a worldwide pandemic, thanks to our partners in progress, SSM Health St. Louis University Hospital is now open, bringing the healing power of presence to the people of St. Louis and beyond. A promise kept, a challenge met. To all of our employees, a heartfelt thanks for all that they do to take care of our patients and to take care of each other over and over every day in countless ways. The future is bright and brighter each day. Be nice. Respect others. Always be polite. Admit my mistakes and be honest. Be proactive. Begin with the end in mind. They said to always do the right thing. Integrity. No, oh, that's the word of the month at our school. My definition would be like the state of being honest with others. It's when you do the right thing. Even when no one is watching. That's what it says on our pantry door. Emotionless. If it's not safe, then people will get hurt, and it'll give your company a bad reputation. And they also want you to feel like you're in a safe environment. You don't want anyone getting hurt, and you want the best possible product. Quality means um, doing a good job. You have to help people. You do. You really have to help. Empatia is importante. Accept others as who they are. Treat people how you want to be treated. If you be nice to people, then they'll be nice to you. Customer focus. Do you know what that means? Customers first. Listening to what other people say. It would be better if you put your customers first. If you really work with them a lot, you could start thinking of them as your, like, second family. Continuous improvement. It means that you always keep on improving. Even if it's little by little, and you know, the tortoise and the hare, tortoise still won the race. There's no point in doing anything if you're not gonna try to get better. Otherwise, you're just gonna stay where you are, and then other people are gonna keep on improving, and they're just gonna rise above. This world is pretty much built on collaboration. You can't do anything without involving someone else. You have to work with other people. It's not about you. You have to all work together. To Working together gets things done faster. Because if there's more people, then there's more hands to help. I feel like it's important to always look aside from your differences and continue to work with people to, like, achieve a goal. Yay, collaboration! 
Innovation means you're trying to invent new things, be the first to change the world. Invent something people will want and need. We have to come up with new ideas. Make it more better. New things that you haven't done before. Use science to solve problems. If people innovate, you can change and make things better. Don't forget we have some amazing auction items up for grabs tonight, and you can bid by texting NKF Gala 20 to 76278 to visit the site. That's NKF Gala 20 to 76278. All the auction items are under the, that's right, items tab. So get your bids in now before the auction closes at 10 p.m. And now we'll tell you about some of our fantastic premium items. Item 201 tonight is the weekend getaway that you and your significant other deserve. You'll enjoy a two-night stay at this beautiful sanctuary guest house located in Washington, Missouri. Upon your arrival, rest and relax with a wine and cheese basket provided by the host. Don't forget to take advantage of the many gorgeous wineries in the area, included with this package a tasting certificate for four to Defiance Ridge Vineyards. Get away from the hustle and bustle with this weekend getaway. Relaxation awaits. Item 201. Item 202. Julie Underdown Photography is an award-winning modern fine art photography studio specializing in families and their children. This $950 certificate includes a $350 session fee and $600 in product credit. Item 202. Item 203 is a generous donation from our friends at Window Nation. Window Nation has donated a certificate for $1,500 towards a window purchase. At Window Nation, they know their replacement windows. They're third generation window replacement experts who have been lucky to provide homeowners more than a million of them replacement windows, siding, and doors for over 15 years. Win this certificate and start planning your replacement today. Item 203. Item number 204. Westport Social Happy Hour. Grab your friends and head on over to Westport Social. With this certificate, you'll enjoy a semi-private event space for a two-hour weekday reception at Westport Social. That will include food and beverage for a party of up to 20 guests. Food will include five selections from the small plates menu. Beverages offered will include two premium bar drinks per person on a mutually agreed upon date. Item numbers 205 and 206. Our generous friends from the Diamond Bar have donated two $500 gift certificates. That's right, there are two up for grabs tonight. Items number 205 and 206. From custom engagement rings to the perfect anniversary gift, they will make it incredible. Handcrafted pieces around any style and budget right here in St. Louis. Let them create a custom piece for you. Item number 207. 
Don't miss this lady's seven inch double strand white cultured freshwater six to six and a half millimeter pearl bracelet with a white gold filigree flower clasp donated by Genovese Jewelers. Treat yourself to this stunning piece. Item number 208. Looking for that perfect anniversary or Christmas gift? Then look no further than this lady's 16 inch pearl necklace containing six and a half millimeter pearls and 14K white gold filigree flower clasp donated by Genovese Jewelers. The off-white pearls shine like you wouldn't believe. We also have some amazing wooden kidneys up for grabs tonight. Each of them were designed by a different local St. Louis artist, and the bidding starts at just $100. There are so many to choose from, you can't pick just one. Get your bids in now before the auction closes at 10 p.m. Welcome back to the Virtual Gift of Life Gala. I'm Chris Raby. So happy to be, again, a part of the evening tonight as we raise some incredible money for some incredible causes. And so honored to be able to chat for a couple of minutes with Jane Hughes if she's got any conversation left in her as we've been visiting and, and hanging out here talking about what the last couple of months have been like, uh, some things that we're both looking forward to, you're looking forward to over the next couple of months as we sit here and raise money on an incredible night and talk to so many people, no pressure, so many no generous pressure. people who That's hopefully good. are enjoying some drinks and uh, the old pocket strings are getting a little looser. What, what, what goes <laughs> through your mind? I mean, it's October, we're, we're approaching the holidays and the last six, seven months have been uh, so unlike anything I think that anyone's ever experienced, but then you, you have a little wrinkle uh, in, inside of that. So just... Jane, as you think about the last six, seven months, wow. how would you describe your pandemic experience? <laughs> well, uh, it's been interesting, but the best part is that on June 23rd, I was able to donate my kidney. Um, I'm an altruistic donor, which obviously most of you will know what that means, but that means that I donated to someone that I don't know who it is. So we'll come back to June 23rd, but uh, tell us a little bit about your background because you're in the medical field here locally. Uh, so you have a strong connection in many ways to uh, uh, to a lot of people that, that were a part of that day, June 23rd. And your journey was a lot longer than just a couple of days or a couple of months leading up to June 23rd. Right. So I'm a pre-kidney transplant coordinator. Um, I've been working in transplant for about four and a half years. And last year, my husband came to me and told me that his kidneys were failing. And I kind of knew his background a little bit and knew that he was having some difficulties. Um, but it was getting to a point where he probably needed to pursue transplant. And so using my expertise, which was nice, we were able to have a couple of dinner conversations and I kind of introduced him to the idea of maybe getting on the list because his function was starting to decline. And uh, during our dinner, I said, you know what, I'll, I'll donate, I'll do it, you know? And he was like, oh yeah, you know, and I mean, it's a casual conversation. You're thinking, oh, kitchen, whatever, but I said, no, really, I will. So he signed up, uh, you know, got his questionnaire in and uh, started his evaluation and then I started mine. And several family members did as well. So, uh, so 15 months later, June 23rd, I ended up not donating to him at all, so uh, there, was, there was a lot of things that transpired uh, in that time, uh, a lot of testing that was done, um, and more testing, and more blood work, and more, <laughs> it's incredible what they put the donors through, which is really not a bad thing, right? So they want to ensure that you're safe, that you are healthy enough to do this, and so uh, 13 months into it, uh, I was uh, told that he had a compatible donor. And I was like, hmm, okay. So it was probably about a month away from being signed off. And uh, I thought, well, you know, I, I've come this far. We've, uh, I'm, you know, almost there. And why not just keep going? So that's what I did. So uh, on June 23rd, we both went into the hospital together, actually. Uh, it was arranged by uh, our my wonderful living donor coordinator, Amy, uh, who made it happen that I was able to go into the hospital and be there the same day that when my cousin was, even though I wasn't directly donating to him. So, 
I know the team, right? I work with them every day. We have amazing surgeons, no doctors. pressure, guys. Yeah, right. You know, uh, coordinators, nurses, uh, and even our administrative assistants. Everybody has that same focus and goal: is to make somebody's life better, give somebody a kidney, and or get them a kidney and make their life better than it is. How, how did the familiar comforts help you through the process, Jane? Because it's one thing to consider perhaps doing something like this, making a sacrifice like this. But then when faced with it actually being reality and you've got a date and you've got, you know, a countdown, uh, to have your cousin going through it with you at the same time, to have the familiar uh, folks within the workplace at Barnes, to know uh, the program and how incredible the program is as, as well as anyone. How did that familiarity help get you through the journey? Well, of course, like I said, I knew I was in good hands with the team, but at the same time, it was very different because this time, all the testing was being done to me. And I've been a nurse for 22 years and always told my patients... You weren't on the sidelines anymore. Yeah, right, right. I've always told my patients, wow, I can dish it out, but I don't take it very well, you know? And here I was um, doing MRI, CT scan, blood work. I mean, you know, just everything that a, a donor and a recipient goes through. And, you know, uh, no special treatment there, right? So I went into Barnes and went to the, and waited in the waiting room, just like everybody else. Um, but I did see firsthand how amazing, the, you know, the different departments were, how, how much they treated me with respect. Each department, whether it was the lab or CT or MRI or wherever I was going. Um, so it, it brought me comfort to know that not only I was being taken care of, but my patients as well. Right, because I'm sending them to those same departments. So it's uh, it's an incredible testament to you know the facilities here and, and at Barnes and also the work that the National Kidney Foundation does. Where this money goes, because all of this in the midst of an unprecedented stretch of stress right. for the healthcare industry, and to have the confidence that you had to know that things were running as smoothly as, as they could, that just you know I I can't even. Peace of mind probably doesn't even sum it up enough. You know, there's there's a lot of uh, it's a physiological thing. It's also a psychological thing. I mean, you know, it'd be great to think that everyone that went through this had a happy ending, and knowing that as a donor, uh, you know, you just have to kind of go with it, right? Uh, and hope and pray. I do a lot of praying, <laughs> especially now, and not knowing this guy or this woman who I've donated my kidney to. Pray for them every night, hoping that that they're living their best life, and that's what our team is all about, right? Is hoping that people can eventually live their best life through transplant, whether it's living donation or deceased donor. So either way, we have to let uh, you know the community know that you know, get out there, donate, sign your yeah. driver's license, right? Do the things that you need to do to help out others. You know, giving yourself to someone is a pretty incredible thing. A piece of it, right? <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah, well, and then to have them in your thoughts now Always. forever. Yeah. Always. Tell us, your cousin was there, what it was like in the days, the weeks, and now it's been a few months uh, since the procedure. Well, what was the recovery like, uh, and what was the benefit of, again, having so many familiar right. people on your team around you guys? So, I was shocked, actually. My biggest fear was pain. <laughs> It, it, it sounds silly, but you know, thankfully I'm uh, going to be 54 in a couple of weeks and I've been healthy my whole life. So I'm going through this major surgery thinking, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? So I'm going to wake up and think, oh, I, I didn't know what to expect. So woke up and I thought, okay, I'm all right. And you know, looked around and I got a little sick that night of anesthesia. The next day I got up and I thought, I'm okay. So I started walking the halls. I'm like, I'm gonna get up and go for a walk and go find my cousin. And uh, he was actually texting me at midnight, the, the night of surgery. Hey, how are you? You know, what room are you in? And you know, we texted him back and forth. And then the next day, I got up and went and found him. You know, uh, so that brought me so much comfort because there was, I'm still a no visitor policy. So my family couldn't be there, including my husband, that I left in the waiting room and went to the back and said goodbye and said, see you in a few days. So that was kind of uh, different as well. So again, yeah, back to, I did it, right? And he did it and he was successful and I met his donor as well, uh, who is, 
his first cousin. And uh, we kind of hung out together and supported each other. And we've been doing that since post transplant as well. Go to meet for lunch or, you know, text back and forth and check on each other. So now I'm back to work. Yeah. Right? Back to helping others. And uh, I do share my story with my patients. Like letting them know that must give you know, them so much comfort. Yeah. yeah, you know, put a sign on your back window, or wear a T-shirt, or do something. You know, look for that donate. You never know. Because I was a stranger to someone, and I donated to them. Right? So it's possible that it could happen for them as well. Yeah, and and finally, uh, you mentioned it uh, a bit earlier, but for for someone who uh, they or their, their family hasn't been touched by this, uh, don't have any uh, firsthand experience like you, that they're not. You know, in the middle of um, in the middle of the expertise, what would you say to them? Why is this so important, and what kind of a difference can can someone make? Oh gosh, I mean, you're changing someone's life. I call it a new lease on life, right? You know, most of our patients are, you know, my patients. I have to say my patients, right? Because this is what I do. Uh, they, you know, most of them are on dialysis, and then then they're not. You know, they they are now feeling better. They have energy, and as I do now. <laughs> Took me a little while to get that energy back as well, but a little bit of pain and a little bit of downtime changed somebody's life. And I think that as a donor, um, as a living donor, I would suggest that you do your homework, of course, you know, um, ask the hard questions, and remember that you know, uh, you know, there's a psychological piece, physiological piece, and just do your homework first and make sure that it's right for you, that you're doing it for the right reason. And for everyone that's with us tonight, even if we're not able to gather together in the same room, and even if they'll never maybe have that peace right, out of right, them, right. so many people are given so much tonight, their time, their energy, right. their money. Yeah. Uh, tell folks tonight what kind of a difference they can make with, with whatever they can give and by supporting this event. Right. What, what are they doing for so many people like your cousin? Well, I mean, you know, obviously it takes money to do anything, correct? I mean, so I'm not suggesting that the world runs out and becomes a living donor, um, but anything that you can do, whether it's your time, um, your donation, of course, that's what he wants, right? We all want that. We want that, uh, you know, to help our patients with uh, the education, with the uh, um, what other resources do we give them with the, the Just make, making things comfortable, right? It sounds like right. everything you guys do every step of the way. It's a lot more than just that one day. Oh, absolutely. It's ongoing. It's always ongoing. No, just so many people that are able to make a difference, even if they might never, you know, experience uh, even someone that... I not even know anyone you know, who has kidney gets disease, a transplant, yeah. right? You know, not everybody has that first-hand experience with knowing somebody directly that has kidney disease. But uh, being a coordinator, uh, the, it's, it's incredible how many people are inflicted with kidney disease. And, you know, uh, the strides that we've, how far we've come with, uh, you know, being able to transplant our patients. And, uh, the, and who knows what the future should be. And that takes money, guys. So tonight, you're going to open up your wallets, right? And you're going to help Chris and I and the rest of the team get some money to uh, uh, help our people, help the people live better lives. Thank you so much, Shane, for sharing your story. It's been great to chat. And I think incredible to see someone who's right in the middle of it, the confidence that you have, the passion you have for the program and for the incredible things that, you know, the National Kidney Foundation and and so many are doing. So thanks for being with us. Let us all be reminded of the great advocacy work that the National Kidney Foundation does throughout the year. It's because of this great work, the Living Donor Protection Act was passed in the state of Missouri. Here's Senator Paul Whelan to tell us all more about it. Hello, I'm State Senator Paul Whelan from Jefferson County. In late 2019, the National Kidney Foundation alerted our office to a situation in which some insurance companies were discriminating against organ donors. As a chairman of the Senate Insurance and Banking Committee, I felt this was unacceptable. Together, we crafted Senate Bill 551, which would prevent any insurance company operating in Missouri from this type of activity. We were excited in January when Senate Bill 551 was the very first bill passed out of the Missouri Senate. However, the 100th session of the Missouri General Assembly was a very unique and unusual session. After a six-week layoff due to the coronavirus, 
session did resume. With just a few days remaining, had we had to decide which bills were going to pass and which ones we were going to hold over till next year. With the help of the National Kidney Foundation and our office, we were able to convince the leadership that this bill just couldn't wait. Together, we were able to get that bill passed and truly agreed and finally passed on the last day of session. It's my hope that this legislation will encourage more organ donations and will encourage more people to give the gift of life. The National Kidney Foundation hosts a variety of programs for kidney patients throughout the year. And tonight, we have some incredible people here to share more about them. Please welcome Dr. Kunal Malhotra of MU Healthcare, who will be telling us all more about the Keep Healthy screenings. Good evening, everyone. My name is Dr. Kunal Malhotra, and I'm an Associate Professor in Clinical Medicine at University of Missouri in Columbia, Missouri. Good evening. One in three Americans are at risk of developing kidney disease. We all know that early detection can help prevent progression of kidney disease to kidney failure. And most people may not have any symptoms until their kidney disease is advanced. This is where Keep Healthy screening comes in. Keep Healthy is a free program from the National Kidney Foundation. It is a community-based initiative to provide education about kidneys, risk factor for kidney disease, and provide steps and guidance for people to keep their kidneys healthy. I've been taking part in NKF's Keep Healthy program for a few years now. Kathleen, Jane, and their team puts up this event in a truly collaborative way with multiple stakeholders involved. Everybody comes together with a common goal of better outcome for the people in our communities and the patients we serve. In Columbia, Missouri, the event is usually held at the public library and is open to everyone. It is well organized with ample space, designated workstations, and smooth flow for people who come to get their screenings done. While many attend after hearing about the program in local media or word of mouth, there are many people who come because they happen to be in the area, and they are truly surprised by the quality of information they get and are always thankful and show gratitude for learning something new, useful, and actionable. Keep Healthy Checkup includes a risk survey, a body mask index calculation after checking weight and height, blood pressure check, a urine test for detecting protein in the urine, and after that, the patient see a dietitian and a healthcare provider for, uh, for their guidance and also get free education material. People who are found to have risk factors are given specific instructions to call their primary care doctor and report the findings that are written down and handed to the attendees. People who don't have healthcare providers are given a list of local resources that they can call to make an appointment. In the end, I would like to say that Keep Healthy program is hugely valuable experience for participants that go through it. There's a chance for people to truly become aware of kidney disease and their own risk. It makes a difference in people's life and that is the number one reason I volunteer for it every year. Thank you and have a nice day. Now please give a warm welcome to Dr. Anuba Mutneja of Barnes Jewish Hospital, Washington University, St. Louis, to share her experience with the Renal Roundtable Program. Hi everyone, this is Anuba Mutneja with Division of Nephrology at Washington University in St. Louis. It is with great pleasure this evening that I want to share my thoughts regarding the NKF Renal Roundtable program. As you all know, the Renal Roundtables are a series of locally based educational events where experts present the most up-to-date information on a topic and then open the floor for discussion among participants. This is a program that not only allows sharing of case studies, common experiences and best practices but it also gives the attendees an opportunity to build relationships in the community with respect to referrals and medical consults, ultimately leading to better patient care. The St. Louis NKF office has done an outstanding job at recruiting quality speakers and topics that are relevant to the local renal community and it's been a great program to bring the nephrology community together. Please welcome Jane Beckman to share a little bit about the Big Ask, Big Give program and her experience with Living Donation. 
Good evening, my name is Jane Beckman and it is my pleasure to be a part of the 2020 Gift of Life Gala. I'm here this evening to talk about The Big Ask, The Big Give. The Big Ask, The Big Give is a program developed by the National Kidney Foundation to increase living donation and transplantation. You know that kidneys from deceased donors are absolutely critical and save thousands of lives every year. But kidneys from living donors last longer and are better functioning Many times they can just pop that bad boy right in there, fires right up, gets to working, and everybody's good to go. So living kidney donations are absolutely the preferred donation. The Big Ask the Big Give teaches kidney patients and their families how to make the big ask to family members, friends, the community, even complete strangers, so that those people might consider making the big give of a life-saving organ. Did you know that the St. Louis chapter of the National Kidney Foundation hosted more than 25% of all the Big Ask, Big Give programs in the whole NKF, over 25%. This St. Louis chapter really is helping people out. My own story is a good example of you'll never know until you ask. I was reading the paper about a guy who needed a kidney. So he walked around Disney World said, with a shirt that said, I need a kidney and his phone number. Another guy was walking around Disney World. He saw the shirt. He thought, geez, I wonder if I can do that. So he made the call and sure enough, several months later, he was able to, to give his kidney to the first guy. I read that article and I thought, geez, I wonder if I can do that. So I called St. Lucia Transplant and sure enough, five months later, my left kidney went to live with my new friend, Jack, down in Arkansas. Over two and a half years later, we're both doing great. Until I got involved with the transplantation process, I had no idea that living kidney donation was even a thing. And I had no idea that so many people were waiting for a kidney while I was walking around with a spare. And I had absolutely no idea that I could help two people live longer, healthier lives by donating just one kidney when I started a chain. So my point is, you never know. You just never know who you might reach with the big ask, who might be at the right point at the right time in their life where they'd be willing to give a life-saving organ. Thanks again for including me this evening, but I can't leave without saying congratulations to Dr. Chris Dillantine for receiving the award of excellence tonight. There is nobody who deserves it more, that's for sure. In my book, she's the greatest nephrologist since the invention of the kidney. So congratulations, Dr. Lentine. Thanks to everybody, and I hope you all have a great evening. Please welcome NKF board member Keith Guller to share his experience with Sydney's Birthday Box. Good evening. My name's Keith Guller, and I'm a board member of the St. Louis Kidney Foundation. Thank you for being with us tonight for the Kidney Gift of Life Gala. We've all had our fill with COVID quarantining. But imagine your life if you were living day to day with kidney failure and on dialysis. Almost half of individuals with chronic kidney disease, CKD, also have diabetes and or self-reported cardiovascular disease. More than 661,000 Americans have kidney failure. Of these 468,000 individuals that are on dialysis, roughly 193,000 live with a functioning kidney transplant. Approximately one in three people with diabetes and one in five with high blood pressure may have CKD. And an estimated 37 million are estimated, or that's every one in seven has CKD. One of you at your table tonight are at risk. This reality is staring at you in the face and is closer than you think. It's right across your table. It's hard to fathom and even harder when you do literally face this reality. This struck me even more so when I visited Children's Hospital with our kidney staff and our one and only Sydney the Kidney. My heartstrings were pulled and so deeply saddened seeing so many children on dialysis. Their normalcy is a quarantine of being on hemodialysis usually four to six times a week for four to eight hours a day. Our children are being homeschooled and their parents confined is nothing to the constrained life of a child on dialysis. Their freedom is to only find a kidney. Our visits to Children's Hospital brought a gleam in their eyes and a laugh 
when Sydney bops in and gives each child a Sydney gift box of art supplies and reading and educational materials for their parents on CKD. You can't imagine the joy on the children's faces that one short visit brings. And think about the sadness as we leave. We go back to our normalcy. They go back for dialysis, for dialysis again. Schooling is always homeschooled. Playgrounds have always been yellow tape now. Friendships are strained and social distanced. Donating to the Kidney Foundation is not just for fighting kidney disease. Kidney screenings, renal roundtables, but they're for smiles to children. In one brief moment in our lives, that can provide an eternity for a child, a memory of a visit from a dancing kidney. Giving is so much more, and I encourage you to do so for a child's smile. Thank you. Thank you again for being with us, and thank you for your generosity to give this evening. Bless you. Let's help them keep up the great work that they're doing tonight by donating. Again, text NKF Gala 20 to 76278 to visit their website and make a donation today. There are so many different levels you can give. Remember, though, when you donate just $100, it'll fund a stuffed animal for a child in the Sydney's Birthday Box program. So please visit the Give Smart site and make a donation tonight. Just text NKF Gala 20 to 76278. Well, my name is Steve. And I'm Erica. And uh, we've been kind of on a mission. We lost somebody in our family, Douglas Stevens Sundance Merritt. He had some kidney failure, and uh, on his very first dialysis that was not in the hospital, um, things kind of fell apart. He went into the hospital that day from the dialysis and was there for 36 days and did not come home. He was that, that one guy that most people wanted to be. He, um, he had that cool charisma, a cool walk. He, um, he was just that likable, fun guy that will always be remembered. National Kidney Foundation had the, the National Walk for St. Louis area. Ended up going there and I just looked around and there was all kinds of families represented and uh, and I was kind of like where where's the representation for the guys that wanted to but didn't make it. We got to talking about it and Erica made some calls and got a hold of a few people and Lo and behold, we came up with the idea that, you know what, we're gonna make a wall to honor the guys that, guys and girls that didn't make it. There's kidneys, and then anybody that's lost someone, we're gonna put their that loved one's picture on there and hang it on the wall for the walk. And uh, that way they won't be forgotten, and uh, people will see them. And that's, that's the whole emphasis of the wall, is to try to make sure that uh, our loved ones are remembered. When we're done with the walk, or you're done with the gala, you'll get to take this beautiful kidney home <laughs> with you. And you can remember that you've been a part of a community, the kidney community, and uh, your loved one will be remembered forever. Yep. When things get to where we can do it in person, Mm -hmm. It'll be a more interactive wall where you'll come to the memorial tent, get your picture sent to a printer right there on the spot, yeah. and we'll get the picture on the kidney and it'll be there. And so all you gotta do is take your phone and email it or text it right to that printer and we'll, we'll make a picture right then and there. If you would like to have your photo on the wall, you can just reach out to the Kidney Foundation and uh, they'll set it up for us.
Thank you all so much for joining us for the first ever virtual Gift of Life Gala and for making a difference and helping the National Kidney Foundation make a difference with all the incredible hard work that they do year round. Thank you again to our sponsors for making tonight possible. Our presenting sponsor this evening is SSM Health St. Louis University Hospital. We'd also like to thank Siemens Health and Ears, Emerson, MTM, Fresenius Kidney Care, Triceta, Care DX, Mid America Transplant, Stiefel Bank and Trust, Delmar Gardens, St. Luke's Hospital, Midwest Nephrology Associates, AstraZeneca, SSM Kidney Care, Otsuka, Pfizer, Tito's Handmade Vodka, Ron and Cindy Maurer, Weinberg Family, Express Scripts. Thank you so much for your generous and continued support. Thank you all again for your generous support tonight and throughout the year. We'll see you next year. Have a great night.